The Tennessee Titans have signed 29-year-old Tyler Boyd, and we will discuss everything right now. Welcome back to another Titan Bros video. Josiah and myself, Gabriel, are hosting today, as we do every day, and we're going to <laughs> we're going to react to Tyler B -B 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 Boyd being signed by the Tennessee Titans. First of all, let me hear what you think about the price. It's a deal that is up to 4.5 million on a one-year deal. It's fine. Uh, I, I think I can't remember if he's talked about this off air or was it actually on video but i'm never saying if we brought him at a good price then i'm okay with it well the price was good to me i i don't think we we did break the bank for him you know i i uh he's a solid player so yeah I, i'm okay with the price um well here's the thing he was technically kind of projected at seven to eight a year on like a two-year deal so the fact that we got him for up to four and a half was a steal. Do you not agree? No, yeah. I mean, I, I thought the original price tag was a little high and dumb in my opinion. So I, I mean, he's, he's a top, he's just a top slot guy. And even last year, who had what would be statistically down year for him was still 667 yards, which means last year he would have been by far our number two. In yards, and the year before that, he would have been our number one wide receiver in yards. With you that, you have a job behind you. Yeah. Do you want to say hi or no? Say hi, Uncle. Hi, um. Hi. All right. It's always something these days, isn't it? They follow me down here, but anyways, um. So yeah, he had a statistically statistical down year, but of course, half the year was Jake Browning, uh, throwing him the ball. So. That doesn't help anything. Um, now, he has been on a... It's not like this makes us a Super Bowl contender. Because he has been... Can you see the kids in the background? I do see a little bit of hail. Okay. Hey, kids, y'all got to leave. Go that way. All right, I apologize. And I think they're playing with my blue lights. Um, but, yeah, statistically, he's been on a downward spiral for since 2019. 2019 had 1,000. 2020, 840. 2021... 820, 2022, 760, 2023, 667. So he's literally just had a, a little trajectory going down. Um, but still getting 667 yards out of the slot, and he's obviously sharing targets with T. Higgins and Jamar Chase. Let, let me put it this way. The last two years, he would have been our number two receiver. Which is a little pathetic. I obviously will call, but um, yeah, here's the thing. I, I, I think you gotta, you can't put too much into this. Like, you know, I don't think this is gonna translate into a ton more wins, you know. Um, he, he's a good three. I don't want him, you know, maybe a two. He's definitely not a one. You know, if, if he give me 500, 600 yards, I, I would be content with that. I don't know about you, but that sounds fine to me. And I think he can do that. Uh, it also depends on how much we throw because, you know, w when we had Derrick Henry, we ran the ball so much, it was hard to get a bunch of receivers a lot of yards, you know what I mean? Because we just didn't throw enough. But Because, uh, you know, if you want to chalk in Hopkins and... Um, Dreadly? Uh, yes, yes. We, you want to chalk them into roughly 1,000 yards. You're like, how many yards do you have left over? If we throw enough, then, yeah, then I think Higgins can get us 500, 600 yards. But, say um, Higgins? Sorry, not Higgins. I bet. Boyd. I wish we got Higgins, mm. but uh, Boyd, yes, yes, Boyd, yes. Uh, but uh, you know he's capable. The only question mark I have, and I was thinking about asking you, but I guess I will. Uh, what do you think this means for Traylon Brooks? Well, I'm not sure how much you put into coach speak because Rabel, you couldn't believe anything he said. He didn't yeah. like to show his hand in any way, shape, or form, whether you love it or hate it. I think Brian uh, Callahan has the opposite issue. He likes to overshare. And he straight up said, we texted him when we were making the hire. We also had already had the or 
you know, uh, the signing, I don't guess you call it a hire, the signing. He's like, and we had to sit down discussion with him, basically saying this does not affect you in one way or another. We're just looking to add more players, which I, here's one thing. It's going to affect him. Yes. Because in my opinion, Burks was going to get some time playing in the outside. And is what they were going to do is with him being on the outside, they were probably putting D hop or Ridley to place them out of the slot to get Traylon Burks in that starting lineup. But now that Tyler Boyd has the slot locked up, then that means you can just have Calvin Ridley and Deandre Hopkins out there as much as you possibly can. Now I will say Traylon Burks is going to be the first one off the bench. Whenever one of them two need a, a breather on the outside, but for whatever reason, the old regiment as well as the new one just has zero thoughts of uh, Burks in the slot, which I find so odd because that's what he played mostly in colleges in the slot. But for whatever reason, since he's been in Tennessee, they ha- they have no desire to see him in the slot. So I guess yeah, that's what I the just, Tyler Boyd signing can mean is they see, think he has no little or no slot value. Yeah, and uh, the thing is to me, and I'm okay with uh, Boyd being our number three because uh, I was reading – some fans of Titan fans post opinions on this stuff. And some people was like, I just think we should have just kept training books one more year and, you know, like give him a, more of a shot than what he's going to have now. And I'm, and I get that, but what, what does he have 500 yards in his two years? Like how many yards does he actually have right now? Well, yeah, he yeah. had 400 and something, 450 ish in his first year. And then only like 223 his second year. Yeah. And I'm still thinking, I mean, we got to do better than that. If we want to actually make a legit run, you know, to win this division, um, you know, it's nice to have your know, sole receiver is capable of giving you 500, 600 yards. This is, yeah. looks more like a today's NFL offense. You know what I mean? It does. And I like that. Whether Brian ha- Callahan turns out to be the guy or not, whether or not Will Levis turns out to be the guy or not, I like the fact that Amy Adams Strunk and Rand Carthon are ready to modernize our football team. Mm-hmm. Like, even if. You know, Will Evans does it 45 times a game and throws all kinds of picks and all kinds of incompletions. I just want to see the attempts. I just want to see the yards. Here's an embarrassing stat. Did you know, which I might, when we do bold predictions right before the season starts in July or August, I might make this my bold prediction, Tennessee Titan prediction, but the Tennessee Titans have never had a 4,000-yard passer. 4,000. I'm not even talking 5,000 like Mahomes puts up sometimes. That might be my thing. Might be like Will Levis, even if he's not elite. I think we're gonna be tossing the rock around a whole bunch. Yeah. So the thing is, uh, I, what one thing I do like is we're giving Will Levis less of an excuse that he doesn't have any help if he uh, doesn't do well. You know what I mean? Like we, he's got receivers now. He I, his offensive line will be better. We'll see how it is. I, I hate that left tackle is a question mark. His left tackle. Well, okay, I forgot. J.C. Latham is moving over, which I don't know how I feel about that. But the right tackles will be a question mark. Um, but obviously, I think it's safe to say this offensive line is going to be better than it was last year. Uh, so Will Levis is not going to have much of an excuse if you know this doesn't work out. And I like that we did that because there isn't going to be well no, no well if we give him more help maybe he'll do better you know well i think by the end of this year i think we should know if he's the guy or not yeah i think that's really what the titans are trying to do because his first year missed half the off season be- uh, because of a thigh quad injury not just that but he was number 3 on the depth chart so he'd go through entire practices where he throws the ball 10 times in practice like what's 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 he mm-hmm. getting out of 10 throws of being the number 3 quarterback um, then he missed the second and third preseason game with his quad injury. He was a healthy scratch almost the whole season because Malik was the backup and Tannehill was the start, not the whole, almost the whole season, but you know the first six, seven weeks. Um, so he's getting no time to prepare. Then he finally goes in there, has his ups, has his downs, understandably so, um, but then he gets hurt, misses a game or two, comes back. And then gets hurt again is, because of his bad offensive line. It, he was hot in Kentucky. So that is something that we got to be a little scared about. Because we've had a history of injured injured quarterbacks. And Will Levis, if you go by college and, like you said, his first year, offseason, and season, his first season in the NFL, he has not stayed healthy. So that is a thing to make you uh, a little 
not excited, I guess. But again, back to the kind of the, the Travis Boyd thing is that Travis, is Travis Boyd? Or Tyler. Tyler. Tyler, my bad. I can't get his name right. He's I was like, he was Higgins. Now he's uh, Travis Boyd. Um, but anyways, as well as Sam Scott actually didn't get to my point. Basically, he got so little time to actually play and prepare in his rookie season. His rookie season is basically a wash. We don't have a fifth year option because he's a second round pick. So you literally have year two, three, and four. That's all you have to figure out if he's going to be your guy or not. So surrounding him with the talent that he needs, don't give him the Marcus Mariota treatment where you're like, okay, so we'll have Rashard Matthews as our number one wide receiver and Bishop Sankey and David Cobb are your running backs. And uh, let's see if you're the guy or not. And then now obviously he ended up not being the guy, but you, he never had enough playmakers around him to actually showcase his ability. Yeah. We're not giving Will Levis that excuse, whether yep. he likes it. I'm sure he loves it by his Twitter. He he loves it when we're making these signings and, and whatnot. So we're giving him all the tools he needs because O-line's going to be better. I know I said that last year, but Brunskill is still Brunskill. Technically, Nicholas petit Ferrer was supposed to be our right tackle last year as well, but then he had the gambling suspension, comes back, plays a few games, and then he... What did he do? How did he get hurt? He did something and was out for season. I don't know, but he did do well when he was in, though. No, but he was playing left tackle mostly because I remember when he came in, it was against the Ravens, and that's when we benched Dillard the first time. And so we put Nicholas petit Ferrer at left tackle. But Nicholas petit Ferrer at right tackle, Daniel Brunskill at right guard, that's still the same thing we had last year, which also can be a little bit scary if you want to think of it that way. But... Lloyd Cushenberry is, we're going from a top, bo- or a bottom five center to a top five center. Like, there's, that's a huge jump. Huge jump. Um, and then left guard, a second year, Peter Skronsky not coming off a, a appendectomy, as well as um, people have been talking about him when he came through for one of his workouts this offseason. And he looks big, like he's put on some weight, which is good. Because you're left guard, you don't need to be super, super nimble like you would be if you were a tackle. So it looks like he's, you know, basically accepting his role as a left guard as opposed to a left tackle. And then J.C. Latham, even if he's a waste of a pick at pick seven, I can't believe I'm saying this because I said this about <laughs> I said this about old, uh, Dennis Daly when we replaced him with Andre Dillard, but can J.C. Latham play worse than what we had going on at left tackle not. the last couple of years? Not at pick seven, I hope not. No, no. Bill like, Callahan I mean, I says... Bill Callahan, he got interviewed for the first time as a Titan, and he said he has zero concerns about moving him over from right to left. Well, what's he going to say? Yeah, that's a good song. I mean, but coach is going to say what. Yeah, well, that was, that was Bill Callahan's guy from the start. So, yeah. Uh, I which mean, I'll which say hopefully, now we need to be off this offensive line, but hopefully, Brian Callahan doesn't do too many extra things for his father. Yeah, I hope not. Because one of our first traditions was Lloyd Cushenberry at center, first, seventh overall pick, left tackle yeah. for his father so i mean don't get me wrong i like i we want a good offline line. it's been a long time since we had a good offline line. but anyway so um back to our main point i think uh having boyd is gonna be nice um you know it's nice to have that third option you know you could double we, with we rarely have a second option we rarely yeah, have a exactly. second option much less exactly. a third this is new to the titans this really is new that we have somebody that even the, in the third slot uh, spot, I guess. Uh, he could be. He could give you a hundred yard game. You know what I mean? Not, it's not I don't a Mike Vrabel. To... It's not a Mike, Mike Vrabel constructed roster anymore. No, it's no. just not. <sighs> no, and here's the thing: Mike Vrabel was actually not even as bad as like um, Mike Malarkey. Do you remember? I remember one year we had four wide receivers on our roster, four, mm-hmm. and five tight ends. So <laughs> Malarkey yeah. might have even actually been worse than Vrabel in that respect. It's just a Titan thing. You know, it's just a Titan thing. We don't want, we don't throw the ball. So hoping hoping this is the first year. So that's exciting. Now, granted, well, can... this might just be awful. He's <laughs> yeah, just exactly. throwing picks after pick after pick, yeah. and he gets benched. And then we're watching Mason Rudolph for the last eight games of the season. Yeah. So that sounds awful. Um, but that's some stinking thinking that we don't need to be doing in May when we still got what four months to go before the season starts. Yeah. So yeah, is one thing I like is the fact that last year we had D hop as our number one. And then we had Burks and as number two, number three, we have the exact same three. The only difference is now we got Ridley and Boyd who just pushed the other two down. So you know what? Burks and Nick Westbrook Aquino might be a really good number four and five wide receiver. Yeah, not good be. enough to not good enough to be two or three, but coming in fresh off the bench for, as the four and the five. 
I said this. I hope we don't have injuries. I don't. But I would say there will be somebody here that's not going to get a good shot. It's either Traylon Bucks, NWI, or Kyle Phillips. Like, you know, if healthy, one of those people is not going to get many looks at all because that's just a lot of receivers. A lot of folks are saying Kyle Phillips ain't a, ain't a uh, lock to make the roster anymore, which I hate. To, I don't know if I love that. To because, me, when he played, he played good. I thought I him and that, Will Evans had a good chemistry together, actually. I agree. I think it's I, an unpopular opinion, but when he played, he got catches. He got yards. Vrabel did not like to let him play. Yeah, my humble opinion is that he plays better than Traylon Brooks right now. He just plays better. But this shows you it does matter when you're drafted. One's a first-round pick, and you give him every chance you can. And what, what round did Kyle Phipps go? Fifth. Fifth. See, it's so much easier to cut a fifth round than it is a first round. Because I, I think Kyle Phipps looks better when he plays than Traylon Brooks. Yeah. Yeah, because there's a lot of folk, though, that just say – Kyle Phillips is trash. Get him out of here. Don't want to see him. I'm thinking he gets hurt way too much. That, that's oh. his problem. Right there. But when he is actually active and on the field, on the roster, like say if it's a minute and a half left of uh, a quarter, not a quarter, of a half or a game, and they throw him out there where he's running routes, he's the go-to guy. Remember, yeah. we saw it in person in Pittsburgh trying yeah. to score before halftime, and they were going to Kyle Phillips almost every single play. Mm-hmm. Remember, in Kyle Phillips' rookie season, his first game against the Giants, we needed a touchdown or a field goal on that last drive. Almost every single pass went to Kyle yeah. Phillips. The dude can ball, whether it's an unpopular opinion or not. The dude can ball. He gets hurt too much, one. Two, Mike Vrabel had no use for somebody who cannot block, so he just did not even – he was healthy yeah. scratches a lot of times at the end of the year. So I kind of, in a lot of ways, hate to see him go, which is why I still think our worst draft pick was – Jaquan Jackson. Oh, that was crazy. a bad pick. Jaquan Jackson. Because I, I, to me, that that's what actually kind of knocked Kyle Phillips off the roster. It was a combination of Jaquan but Jackson. Kyle Phillips Howard. is better. I mean, I haven't seen him play. But think. At this point, I would say Kyle Phillips is better. No. But, uh, yeah. I, so I it's it's going to annoy Phillips me. Both, Kyle Phillips was better in college. Like, I remember watching his highlights, and he looked really good. This other guy, just like, he never had a 500. What, was it 500 yards? Or he, 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 he never did had not 500. have 500 yards. Yeah, nope. so I'm like, no. I mean, it's going to make me mad if, like, Kyle Phillips gets cut and then, well, the Bengals. Guess what? The Bengals need a uh, slot receiver. Mm -hmm. And he just goes in there and he becomes a, you know, five to 800 yard guy every year. It's going to annoy me. It's going to annoy the crap out of me. But I feel like he's probably as good as gone unless Tyler Boyd or Jaquan Jackson get hurt. Because why would you need a third string slot receiver? You know what I'm saying? Yeah, I, was, I agree with that. Yeah. Can play slot. So, anyways, um, I would I like the move back to Tyler Boyd because technically that's what kind of got all this kicked off. I like the move. Tyler Boyd is going to uh, be the best number three we've had. Actually, that's a discussion we can d- briefly discuss before we get out of here. A lot of people are saying this is the best trio of Titan wide receivers in Tennessee Titan history. Yeah, I think so because I don't know if we've ever had a trio before. The best we've ever had was <laughs> in, in recent history. There was the Drew Bennett, Derek Mason, but I can't even remember who the number three guy would have been back then because you're not talking about just two guys and a yeah. scrub. You're talking about just three actual dudes, as they say. You, you know, yeah. Uh, then I Corey, Davis, Corey Davis, A.J. Brown, Adam Humphreys would be the closest, but let's be honest. Adam Humphreys was kind of a... Let down. Injuries. Injuries got to him, one, and two. We got Mike Vrabel still, who does not like slot wide yeah. receivers. Um and then Corey Davis was what Corey Davis was. He would have been a good, solid player if he was drafted in the second round. But being drafted fifth overall kind of made you. Eh. But uh, I agree. Um, I'll take these three. I would take these three over the AJ Brown. The, 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 uh, the unexciting thing, and I don't know why this matters, but it does matter a little bit to I think fans and to me. Even though at the end of the day, all I want to do is win. None of these three receivers are homegrown, drafted from us receivers. You That's know, because. Hopkins is not considered as a Titan. Definitely won't be. Ridley is not considered as a Titan. Uh, and Boyd won't, is not a Titan. So none of these are homegrown. We got them from day one receivers. And there's something a little more exciting when you get someone that you draft and you, he's been a Titan so cruel. But, you know. Jaquan but, Jackson. <laughs> there you go. But, yeah. yeah. Uh, and the reason because, in fact, I remember Brian Callahan unintentionally throwing shade at John Robinson where he's saying – 
something and to the fact of, yeah, we've spent a lot of money this free agency. This is not the way you build a good team in the long term, though, because you want to draft and develop young players. That's the way to do it, which is a way of saying we had to sign all these players because John Robinson drafted nothing but busts in the first round. So he that's did. why we have to, which is, uh, sadly, it's true. I mean, it's true. The reason we are the way where we are is because in 2020, Isaiah Wilson was a bust. In 2021, Caleb Farley was a bust. In 2022, Traylon Burks, probably a bust. That was his last three first round picks. Mm-hmm. From like, we're getting nothing. Nothing. Not just that, but like even the second rounders were, McCreary's been fine. I'm happy with McCreary. But then you got people like Dylan Radins and Christian Fulton. Like, these just, how do you miss that often on your first couple of picks? And that's why we're basically having to buy our players. Now, being able to buy somebody like, um, Boyd for only up to four point five million. Yeah. It's a good move, but still, but still, yeah. Anyway, a lot to be excited about. I, I, I see us offensively just gonna look new, and we'll see just how good it's gonna be. But this is not yesterday Titans offense, which is a good thing. No, it's, no, time, it's not. Time to make that move. We've been needing to make that move for years, but I agree. And I remember somebody saying it. They said. Whether they should or not, actually, I think I added this first part, but whether they should or not, the Titans are trying to win this year. I mm-hmm. think they should. I think they should. When you have 80 ish million in cap space, you better yeah. be able to do something. Plus, yeah. it's not like we had three wins last year. We had six. So, if we only win three more games this year, that's still nine and eight and could very well I be pushing. I would say, though, sadly, as we're getting better, so is the whole division. The only, and I know this is a hot take. The only divi- team in our division that didn't get better, I think, is the Colts because I think Gardner Minshew is probably... Well, here's the thing. Gardner Minshew is a league average quarterback. So it just depends on what you think of Anthony Richardson. Do you think he's going to be yeah. a league average quarterback or do you think he's going to be worse? Because I think I could very well see the Colts going 7-10 and 10 simply because, one, I'm not sold on Richardson. He hasn't done anything good or bad to impress anybody in the NFL. He got hooked too much. Yeah, he did. Well, because he got hurt, came back, and then got hurt for season. Yeah, because he was a quarterback, and so he's gonna be wrong. Like he needs reps, and he didn't get any. So, yeah. with, I do agree. I think the bottom team in our division will be Colts. I do agree with that. Yeah, but I think it's gonna be. But I do agree. Now, Jags actually, Jags kind of went downhill as well because they let Ridley go and replaced him with Gabe uh, Gabe Davis. You know, well, he's pretty decent. I like him a lot, and they drafted receiver on the first round. Remember. Yeah, a little overdrafted too. But uh but Gabe Davis, people say he's a ghost. Like most most games he'll have like two catches for twenty yards and that's it. And then he'll have one random game where he has like hundred and eleven yards probably every time he plays the Titans. But I I heard he was he's kind of a let's be honest, kinda of like Corey Davis was. A lot of times Corey Davis would go like a, a three game stretch where he'd have like fifty yards with all those games put together. Um Trying to see what Gabe Davis is about because I feel like his his yards looked better than they actually than he actually plays. Yeah, he had seven hundred last year. The most he ever had was eight hundred with uh, in twenty twenty two. He was five hundred, five hundred, eight hundred, seven hundred. But I mean, still, I mean, that's a, a decent trio though. If you have Gabe Davis, a good receiver, they drafted and actually wait, was that it? Who was the number one receiver last year? Christian Ridley? Kirk. Christian Kirk. Okay, Christian Kirk and Ridley was their number one too. Christian Kirk kind of overperformed his first year and then kind of came back down to earth his second year yeah. in Jacksonville. I think Texans, though. Now, the Texans, though, those are the thing that bothers me. Not just that, but I think their new uniforms are pretty cool. Their uniforms look the same, but I like the H-Town on mm-hmm. the side. I'll say like, this. Man. Because they have a good quarterback. I think C.J. Stroud might be the best quarterback in the draft. But I think I'm I'm beginning to really like the roster, too. <laughs> so The receivers, Tank Dell, yeah. um, Nico Collins, and, of course, Stephon Diggs. Now, Stephon Diggs did take a step back last year, yeah. and he is 30 now. But still. But he's still got a lot. I, I mean. He's still got some juice. Uh, Thankfully, I, we got Legereus Sneed, Chidobi, Awuzi. And Roger McCree to throw yeah, at him, but I think still. their defense might be a little better now, too. Later. Yeah, because they picked up Danico Autry and Aziz Alshire, and then, of course, uh, Daniil. Did, did they draft? Did they draft this year in the first round? Because I'm not like, oh, that's a good pick. I, th- I didn't think they had a first round. What, did they not? Because uh, they had to trade for CJ Stroud maybe, last maybe year. Maybe they don't. Either way, who they got last year, 
not CJ Stroud, but the other one in the first round last year was is a good defensive player. Yeah, their first p- person they picked the second round was cornerback Kamari Lasseter, and they picked a tackle in the second round also at Blake Fisher. Honestly, I don't really know much about their uh, draft class, but you could say that CJ Stroud is kind of a part of their draft class because yeah, yeah. So, but anyways, yes, we're talking. Yeah, yeah, we're Texans. we're talking too long now. We're talking about the Texans, but uh. Anything else you want to say about Tyler Boyd being added to the roster? No, I just say I think it's a good pick for cheap. Um, I think if he could give us five hundred yards, I'd be happy. And again, it's just to me a sign of our offense is a little bit different. Oh, a lot of bit different, and that's to me one of the most exciting parts. I agree. I agree. No, gone are the days of pounding the rock thirty times and hoping and to win thirteen and throwing sixteen and hoping to win thirteen to ten. Yep. So. That being said, we're going to get ourselves on out of here. Make sure you check out this video, our old videos as well, reacting to the draft and everything. So tighten up, peace out, and all of that jazz. <laughs>